Patrick takes the snap, drops back, lobs it back right corner. Decker! He's got it! Touchdown! Eric Decker scores! And the Jets have won it in overtime! This is the Jet Take with Ben Blessington and Kyle Fahey. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another installment of the Jet Take. I am your host for tonight, Kyle Fahey, and I am joined by the one and only, the honorable mention, the all-pro producer, Gangry David. David, what's going on, man? What's going on, Kyle? Um, it's a great night. And were you going to leave it? Just a great night? Okay. And David's already gone. Great. All right, so uh, I think David was going to say it's a great night to talk some Jets. Not a lot of news, but there is enough for us to definitely hold a show tonight. We already got some great callers on the line, and when David rejoins us, he will definitely express his opinions. But um, let me just run down the topics that have been going on over the past week. Uh, or Actually, first, let me go ahead and shout out all of our social medias because we're thirsty for followers, as usual. You can follow the Jet Take on Twitter, at the Jet Take. You can follow us on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and, of course, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, any other podcatcher you can think of, iHeartRadio, stuff like that. Just search the Jet Take. We should pop up automatic, uh, automatically. Uh, I'll take this one from Joe. Uh, you can troll us. We'll troll you right back. Uh, we love doing that. We love getting intense discussions with you guys, not only you know off the show but on Twitter. So... Uh, I think we're ready. David's back, so we're ready to jump into the topics. And David, let's just go over the topics over the past week. Uh, obviously, I think the breaking news over the past week was Robbie Anderson arrested while at the Rolling Loud Music Festival uh, down in my state, uh, Florida. You know, specifically Miami-Dade County area. Um, David, your initial reactions on it when it first came out, and then uh, we'll talk about it, knowing the information that we have now a little later. Um, you know, I was actually shocked that this happened because, you know, since Robbie Anderson is a rookie in the NFL and um, he's actually just starting to get into the flow of this whole NFL process, I guess, like, maybe you could say, like, oh, he probably made a stupid little mistake and he's actually going to get suspended for it. But what's really grinding my gears, I mean, if you want oh. to play the stuff, but you can't, but oh. what's actually, oh, yeah, I think it's gone. But what actually really gets me mad about it is that fans are actually overreacting saying that he should get cut and he should get released. The thing I want to say to that is these fans are foolish and are not real fans of the Jets. Not real fans of the Jets. Why? It's because Robbie Anderson is a young, talented receiver with lots of potential in him. He's a hard-working guy who wants to go out there, bust his ass, and put in a lot of effort on that football field. And because of one stupid mistake you want him cut, I'm ashamed of this fan base, Kyle, honestly, because this overreaction from the fans has gone far enough. Yeah, I think that's a definitely fair statement. Everything there, like you said, he's a very talented guy. He's a hard worker. You know, young guys make mistakes from time to time. Uh, here's my view on it. Uh, one, knowing the reputation of the Rolling Loud Music Festival, and for those who don't know what Rolling Loud is, please just look it up because um, I'm not going to explain it on air. Uh, hi, uh, I know he's a kid, he's enjoying himself, I, I really shouldn't call him a kid because he's got like eight years on me or something like that, but you know, not the best place for a fairly famous individual to be, uh, it's around his hometown, so I'm sure a lot of people know him, uh, but you know, that's my opinion, he should have been there in the first place, but I get it, he's enjoying himself, he got to live sometimes, so I'm not mad at him about that, uh, the, way, the way it sounds to me it seems like this police officer overreacted at something, and I think his job was lost because of it, and there were obviously previous incidents, incidences. But in regards to his roster spot, I definitely don't want him cut. Like you said, I think he's a talented individual, and he definitely deserves the roster spot he has right now. But if he did get cut, which I hope he doesn't, let's not act like it's the end of the world, though. Everybody loves Robbie Anderson because he's a fast guy who's been able to catch the ball. And I'm going to be honest, the Jets haven't had that in, what, five, six years? I think that's why a lot of people love Robbie Anderson. I don't think it's because he's some extreme talent. He's our number three wide receiver. It's not like he's our number one. It's not like he was Brandon Marshall in 2015. He's just a guy who can take the top off, and he's been able to catch it for us, something we haven't had in a while. So obviously the fans fell in love with him. 
you know, obviously Mac got him as an undrafted free agent. He's a great story. He's a hard worker. I like the kid personally. He seems like a good guy. But let's not act like it's the end of the world if he does get cut. I'm not saying he should get cut. I don't want him to get cut. But let, let's, just, let's just not freak out if he does. Um, I believe he is bailed out because I saw him on his Instagram, uh, I think last night or maybe this morning. I don't know. So um, we'll see what happens in court. Uh, he was charged, and I, at this point, I don't think the charges have been dropped. But, you know, according to a couple of reports, David, this officer has had a pretty extensive history when it comes to, um, I don't know how to put this, but situations like this regarding certain types of people. Um, so maybe these charges could get dropped. Do you see that as a possibility? I know you're obviously not a legal expert or anything, but... No, David. well, actually, Kyle, um, I actually do agree with you. I mean... What? No, sorry, I cut out a little bit. No, um, as I was saying, though, I mean, you you are right. I mean, I will be kind of peeved if he does get cut. But then again, though, our receive our receiving core now is stacked up with young talent, such as Darius Stewart, Chad Hansen, Jerome Peak, all these young guys who want to go out there and work hard on that football field. So, you know, Robbie Anderson right now though is our best bet at the number three receiver because he already has experience with this depleted quarterback roster other than Christian Hackenberg and um, Josh McCown, mainly Bryce Petty in the matter. But, you know, I would be pretty peeved if Bryce Petty gets cut. But it would also be nice to go see the young town out there, go out there, bust their ass, and work hard. And that's actually what I wanted to talk about tonight is pretty much the fact that I mentioned on Let's Talk Jets last night that I'm actually excited for this season because I actually want to see this young talent go out there and do what these older vets couldn't do. And that's to actually show Win. passion, love. What? Win. When? Win. Like win games. He said what the veterans can do. Well, we, well <laughs> certain. I didn't say that, Kyle. I said No, no, no. Veterans. I said it. I said it. It was a joke. It was a bad one. Continue. Continue, David. Continue. Kyle, stop with the jokes. But... Yep, but I'm actually excited for the season because if you're just a negative Nancy who just wants to, who just wants to say, oh, we're gonna we're gonna suck for the next four years. I mean, I get embrace the rebuild, but don't go being all negative. Be excited to see what this young talent could do because you're embracing the rebuild. And Mike McCagnan honestly really built off this draft, and honestly, I think we actually drafted very well. And I want to see what this young talent could do. Yeah, so I'm I excited, have... Kyle. I'm a I'm a positive fan, and I'm ready for the season. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm definitely excited for the season. I don't know how many wins it's going to hold us, but knowing that we're not expecting a lot of wins this year and knowing that this is basically a year to figure out what we have, what we need to fix, specifically the quarterback position. This is really the year, and this is his first opportunity um, for Christian Hackenberg to go out there and prove himself. Second-round pick, you know, this is your time. You're probably going to get the starting job, even though you probably won't win it. You will probably get the nod even over Bryce Petty. Uh, so let's just hope that these young receivers, uh, like Robbie Anderson and the other guys we drafted, can thrive. And that will be one of our main topics later tonight. We have an abundance of wide receivers on this roster, just to name a couple. Uh, Eric Decker, Quincy Numwa, obviously Robbie Anderson, Jalen Marshall, Devin Smith, Sharon Peake, Quentin Patton. Then the two guys we drafted this year are Darius Stewart, Chad Hansen, then we went out and signed KD Cannon, or we actually claimed him off of waivers, I'm sorry. And then we have a couple of guys that most people don't even know of. Bristley S. Time, I believe he was also an undrafted free agent. Gabe Marks and Frankie Hammond. I mean, you know, I didn't count that exactly, but that's definitely over 13 guys. So there's a lot of talent on this roster, a lot of competitions to be won, and we will discuss that a little in depth with some of our callers later. But let's go on to our first caller of the night, and that is going to be our good friend, Hakeem. Hakeem, thanks for calling in, man. We haven't heard from you in a while, but I'm glad you called in tonight. What's going on? Hey, Kyle. Hey, David. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, I've been busy with work, but I managed to get, uh, you know, a Wednesday off, so I was really excited to call you guys. So excited about the draft and our season moving forward. A lot of, like, you know, themes that we got going on with Jet Camp and, of course, the Robbie Anderson situation, but I, I'm, I'm just excited to see what's going to happen, you know? Yeah, and uh, before we touch on the Robbie Anderson situation, because, you know, we talked about it in a little bit to start the show, uh, some reports surfacing today that the Jets 
or I'm sorry, Gerald Hodges will be visiting the Jets at some point this week. Uh, for those who don't know, he's a talented inside linebacker slash outside linebacker, depending on how your defense, defensive coordinator uses him. Obviously, with Todd Bowles, he can be a very versatile player with his speed. Uh, just a talented guy who, for some reason, has just fallen through the cracks of free agency and might fall into the laps of Gang Green. So what would your thoughts be, one, if the Jets uh, landed Gerald Hodges, and two, where do you think he can fit into this defense with young linebackers, other linebackers like Deron Lee, who was our first-round pick uh, the year before this one, Lorenzo Malden, and, of course, Jordan Jenkins? Yeah, absolutely. I would love for us to, you know, get Hodges here in the fold, uh, depending on his price. You know, I don't want to give him anything significant. But, uh, you know, on a one-year deal, see how he responds. But uh, it would be great because we can make that uh, position really competitive. And, you know, I could argue that every position on our team has a decent amount of competition with obviously like the wide receiver being the really probably the most competitive. But our inside linebacking corp is not as competitive. And, you know, I, I wish we had drafted an inside linebacker, you know, with all those picks that we had, but we didn't. But quickly we re-signed Bruce Carter, which I liked. But Hodges would be a, definitely a great add to push, you know, for that third linebacking spot, the first one to come in behind Harris or Lee, um, and get, you know, Julian Sanford maybe uh, out of the rotation because I don't really think that he has what it takes to, you know, be a linebacker in this league. And I was really uncomfortable moving, you know, that he could be potentially playing in some games if, you know, one of our players got hurt. So I would love to add him. I think we would, that would give us a strong inside linebacking core going into the season. Yeah, and right now I'm looking at our depth chart provided by rlabs.com. Shout out to them. Uh, this isn't official by any means, but they do a fairly good job at keeping track. And right now the inside linebackers on the Jets roster are as follow. Uh, David Harris, obviously, is a multi-year veteran, uh, been the leader of this defense in the locker room and on the field for basically his whole career. Uh, I already mentioned former first-round pick Deron Lee. Uh, he'll probably be playing the number two inside linebacker spot. Then behind him, you mentioned Bruce Carter, who we re-signed a couple days ago. And then behind him is really nobody I've even heard of. Randall Johnson, never heard of him in my life. And then Austin Cal Califro, I don't even know how to pronounce his last name, to be honest. So really, depth here is not great, and even our starters aren't great, because David Harris, as everybody knows, is very... Um, prone to getting burnt, I'll say it like that, and Jerron Lee is still working out some kinks from his rookie campaign, and really guys we can't trust. You know, Bruce Carter came in as a solid backup, but I think Gerald Hodges would come in and be a very good depth player for us. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. I mean, this was supposed to be Aaron Henderson's role, but he let us down. Huh. Uh, yeah, we definitely need, uh, you know, an inside linebacker. And I'm, I'm really glad we brought Bruce Carter in the fold because he brings a lot of special team value. And I would expect Hodges to play special teams as well, which would improve us, you know, significantly. And they could rotate in, uh, you know, on third down packages and we could take David Harris off the field. So, uh, you know, I think it would be a great fit. I, it would be a strong move, I think, uh, for the Jets after draft weekend, uh, signing Hodges, really, you know, fortifying that defense. Uh, a, hu a huge pickup for us and uh, give me a lot of confidence in this defense moving forward. David, uh, go ahead and give us your take on possibly signing Gerald Hodges. Um, first, before I do that, first of all, Hakeem, um, I want to thank you for calling in. Um, it's, been a, it's been a while since um, you came on the show and um, I apologize if you didn't hear me. My computer was bugging out a little bit, but um, you know, uh, my take on Gerald Hodges, you know, um, you know, he's actually a very versatile, talented linebacker who would actually fit Kevin Green's system very well, in my opinion, and he's better than any linebacker we have on the roster right now, and even David Harris, who's obviously lost his mojo, lost his athleticism, and lost his speed and his ability to cover because he's already getting older. And then Darren Lee, who immensely struggled in covers last year, so adding Gerald Hodges would be a good addition. But however, Bruce Carter, on the other hand, you know, he already has a lot of benefits on the table. And now with Kevin Green in the mix, he could potentially be another starter or he could even be another good player. But actually, I want to get your take on the draft because, because um, you know, I, I, I know you were a big team. draft guy. I think we did, did just we? lose the team. Yeah, I believe he disconnected. But, David, go on with your take. I'm sure he'll call back in in a second. Uh, 
Well, I was pretty much sure my take on that linebacker core, but um, I actually did want to actually talk about something I brought up on Let's Talk Jets last night, and um, that was, and um, I think you and Ben even brought it up at one point. That was like a potentially moving Darren Lee to outside linebacker, but Kyle, honestly, um, you know, would you actually move Darren Lee to outside linebacker? I mean, he definitely has the athleticism to do it. I wouldn't doubt it. Um. I don't, like you said, he has struggled a little bit with the mental uh, aspect of the game and, you know, not bringing down outside linebackers in any way, but they are not asked by any means to do as much uh, as middle linebackers are. So possibly moving Deron Lee to outside linebacker could help him in a way. Uh, I believe we have Hakeem back on. Hakeem, I believe we lost you for a minute there. Um I don't believe you were talking, Dave, it was, but can you hear us fine now? Yeah, yeah, thanks. I don't know what happened. No, it's all good, man. Things happen from time to time. Trust me, we have a fair share it's of technical okay. issues ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I, I had one just early, I had one just a little bit earlier on, but um, I actually want to get I want to get your take on the draft because you were actually very you were very you were an avid draft person and like you were actually going off with the prospects and um. You know, the Jets actually, I think in my mind, got to steal the draft, Jamal Adams, and I honestly love this pick, and I'm honestly very, very happy, and I've honestly wanted him since he was even a prospect picture. What, what is your take, Hakeem? Yeah, oh, man, Jamal Adams, that made my night. That that made our whole draft, you know. Um, I was always thinking that, you know, I wanted a Malik Hooker because I always assumed that Jamal Adams would be gone. Um, you know, I talked to one of my friends, he's a Bears fan, and he was all over Jamal Adams, and, like, that was his guy and everything. So I always just assumed that he would never make it to us. And as, you know, the draft is unfolding and he's trickling down, like, I'm going crazy, and then he's there for us on the board, and when we select him, I'm, like, jumping up and down at work, and I'm going nuts, like, running around. Uh, so I'm super excited for Jamal. I can't wait to see him, you know, play on Sundays and just – you know, tackle everyone. And he's going to lay the wood on a lot of running backs and wide receivers. And, it's uh, you know, it's going to bring this Jets defense back to life. So I'm really excited. I think it was great value. Um, it's an A-plus grade no matter which way you look at it, especially, you know, with all the leadership and intangibles he brings on that side, which, you know, we desperately needed. And he brings a lot of energy. Another thing that, you know, uh, the kind of theme and culture that we're trying to build, and it was a great way to kind of attack that need right off the bat with our first pick. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, he was my number two overall player, um, and I, I was surprised. I had him going to the Bears in my final mock draft, uh, and I believe you mentioned somebody that you were, uh, like a friend of yours, I believe you said, who yeah. was all over him for the Bears, you know, really wanted him, and they really needed a playmaker uh, you know, on the back end of their defense. But, you know, they went with my number one quarterback and Mitch Trubisky. Uh, you know, we'll see how that pans out for them. Uh, but what do you think the immediate effect for Jamal Adams is coming in? And where do you think this leads Calvin Pryor? We touched on this a little bit last week. But like we said, we haven't had you on in a while, so we would like to get your take on that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, for Calvin Pryor, he's got to still come out and compete. Like, you know, uh, we're trying to make every – position as competitive as possible and we saw that obviously with picking may in the second round so i think now actually you know Bowles has a lot of ingredients to work with to cook up his defense so really you know i think i think it presents Bowles with a great opportunity to come up with some exotic schemes and use all three of them you know if he needs to but the depth would be there if someone got hurt but right now my starting two safeties until i see training camp are jamal adams as my number one and I would trust Calvin Pryor, number two, just because he's more experienced. And then I'll see how May progresses, and he can be my third. But hopefully I want May to come in and take that job as soon as possible. You know, that's what we drafted him for. But, you know, using Calvin in, as a third safety on the field, I think we can put him in some good spots to succeed. So I think I'm excited. I mean, I, I, we're not going to get any value for him trading him. So we might as well just keep him in his contract here, hope he does really well, and we'll see how that moving forward. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> All right. yeah. 
uh, standing ovation for Hakeem. And as I was saying before, David, you know, um, did the little did the clicky thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, where you said Calvin Pryor would get the nod over Marcus May, so I'm assuming that Jamal Adams would be playing free safety in this scenario. Well, our safeties have to be interchangeable. Obviously, you know, if it comes down to the fact that Calvin Pryor can't be interchangeable and he doesn't produce uh, as being a versatile safety, then Marcus May is going to have to prove it. So, I mean, the competition is there. Like, Pryor has no outlet. He has to come out and play. His career mortality is on the line. And same thing with, I think, Sheldon Richardson. So, I think they have to play well. And I want them to play well for us and see, you know, maybe we can even, you know, keep them in the fold just to have that position stay competitive or, uh, you know, maybe get a comp pick, hopefully, if they get a great, crazy deal. But, you know, that's all, like, crazy in the future. But I think that just keeping every position as competitive as possible is just going to help these young players grow and the best man's going to play. And uh, so I, that's and you know that, that'll keep them all hungry and ready to you know jump on a chance at any opportunity. And I guess with you know our roster at this point, that's all we can ask for. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And right now, uh, I'm looking at the Jets' depth chart for safeties, and I see a lot of fairly young guys who have you know for for the most part pro- producing pretty well. Obviously, uh, the guys that we have right now from this draft, Jamal Adams and Marcus May, but you look at the guys we already have the roster. Uh, Calvin Pryor, former first-round pick. Obviously, we've been talking about him a lot. Still, you know, it's still out on him. This, like you said, he could go out this year knowing that this is basically his last opportunity. Behind him, you know, all the last year, was Rontez Miles, uh, a guy who came out and was just as productive as Calvin Pryor, even though he played, like, I, I believe it was 33% less snaps, according to Pro Football Focus. And he was also a baller on special teams. So he's, he's starting to prove himself. And then guys like Douglas Middleton and Ron Martin, who, you know, we've seen them sparingly, but when they have played, they've been fairly good. So I think the safety core is a lot better than people think in the addition of Jamal Adams and Marcus May only makes it better. Uh, David, any last thoughts before we let Hakeem go? Um, Hakeem, I actually want to just tell you why I played that standing ovation for you, well, that soundbite. You basically just proved my point about Calvin Pryor, because I've been actually saying this now for months. I mean, yes, mm-hmm. now we drafted Jamal Adams. Are we having this argument again? There... No, we're not <laughs> having this. Well, Kyle, let me explain myself before I play the yeah. boo one for you. But oh. anyway... <laughs> But anyway, now that Jamal Adams is drafted and now that they won't pick up Calvin Pryor's fifth-year option, he won't want to be traded during the draft, okay, his value has obviously regressed, and, you know, it, Calvin Pryor's job is more at risk. But you were saying how Calvin Pryor should be playing in there to compete. You're absolutely right. I've been saying this time and time again. Let Calvin Pryor play out his final year like a boss, like a champion. He, well, not like a champion, but... <laughs> you get my point. <laughs> you get my po- Well, he's, he won't play like a champion, but he, he's going to go out there and play hard, and he wants to. Pr- he should be proving everybody wrong. He should be proving that he is still, he is still that 2015 self where he was actually, actually hyping up on him, and he should leave 2016 out the door and compete for his career and compete for his job. And who knows? Maybe they'll change their mind at the end. But Akeem, I applaud you for that, man. Hey, thanks a lot, man. I mean, uh, we're going to see what happens. Um, you know, th- thank you guys for la- having me on. I just wanted to say, you know, uh, a great theme about our Jets draft, I think we, you know, improved our special teams immensely through the draft. And I don't think we're talking about that enough. Like, all of our special teams positions now are really competitive as well. We've got yep. outstanding gunners that have athleticism, speed, and tenacity. Like, if Chad Hansen or, or Darius Stewart really want to play this season, they're going to have to do it on special teams. And, yep. and I would love to see that. You know, Dylan Donnie, who's already ready, he loves special teams. Like, so I'm super excited, and we'll see what Elijah McGuire brings and all of our undrafted free agents and Derek Jones down the sideline. I'm super excited for our special teams, and I think it's going to help us win some ball games, hopefully. Uh, but, yeah, guys, thanks for having me on. I love your show. I listen to it every week. Um, but – and if anyone else wants to follow me, you can follow me at on Twitter at Hakeem Amir. 
and I'm always trying to stir up something about the Jets. But thanks, guys. Uh, I'll, I'll see you guys later. Hey, man, thanks for being on. And that's what I love about Hakeem, and that's why I love about consistent callers. And he just left, so he isn't going to hear this, but I'm sure he'll listen to the show at some point in the, week, in the coming week. Uh, he knows to give himself a shout-out. <laughs> that's, how, that's how good Hakeem is. He's just been a regular on the show. Uh, and we're going to keep rolling on. we got another caller on the line, and that is the always controversial Justin. Justin, thanks for calling in, man. Uh, you've been on wait for a little while. Thank you so much for waiting. I'm sure you've been listening to the topics. Uh, mm-hmm. let's, start, let's start with the safety position because that seems to be a fairly uh, in-depth topic that we could talk about. Um, how do you think the drafting of Jamal Adams and Marcus May affects Calvin Pryor on this roster? And is there a possibility that we can move him into that Dion Buchanan role that Todd Bowles had in Arizona, that linebacker slash safety mix? So just go ahead I mean, and give your... Give your opinion on that. I mean, yes. Akeem hit it right on the head. I mean, Calvin Pryor, I think he's, he's playing his heart out, and this is the year we're going to see if he can either step up or he may be gone. So, I mean, it, o- it only helps. I mean, he has experience, and guys like Adams and May, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help them with a guy like Calvin Pryor. And I, I, I think Calvin's going to surprise a lot of people this year. I really do. Well, what do you think the role Calvin Pryor is going to have this year? Do you think he's going to come in and beat out Marcus May or possibly Jamal Adams? No, absolutely not Jamal Adams. May, possibly, but, I mean, it all depends. Competition brings out the best in people, and that's what we may see. Now, if uh, Calvin Pryor does beat out May, that, I think that would be fair to assume that Calvin Pryor would be taking up a role of more versatility. And I think that's something that we can't necessarily expect him to do. Uh, and when I say that, I mean, if he's beating out May, who is expected to be our free safety, but also has well, a not Well, no, that's wrong to begin with because well, that, that's another thing that you people are getting mixed up. These, these two safeties we got, are, they're not free safeties or they're not – they're interchangeable. They, they're I, not considered free or – they're interchangeable parts and they can do it all. So, I mean – I don't so, know about that one. So I said he was versatile, Justin, if, if you listen, but that, that's okay. Um, but I think it's fair to say Calvin Pryor can't do that. I think it's fair to say that he can't cover. I think he's proven that. So, yeah, so I'll give him a lesser role and play him in the box more with Jamal Adams and play him as free safety. So you do think that regularly starting, like on our opening package of the game, it will be Marcus May and Jamal Adams, seeing as Calvin Pryor can't cover, and Jamal Adams would beat him out? Mm, it depends what we do with Calvin. I think we're going to use it more of a three-safety look this year. Okay, that's fair. I mean, Todd Bowles is known to switch up his defenses from time to time. Uh, let's switch over to the linebacker core. I'm sure you heard us talking about Gerald Hodges. Uh, what yep, you I've been calling it for months. Excellent yep. move. Can we get yep. this guy signed, please? How many times did I say it on your guys' show? I want you, to. You I think I'm going to go back. You have this said it quite a bit. This would be an excellent signing. He's young. He could take over for David Harris, even if David Harris stays for one year, which we already went over this a hundred times. I wanted him gone, but even if he does stay, he, he could be here for the next five years. And this is what we need: foundational pieces for this organization. Him and Lee, we can mold together and create something special at that linebacker court. So if we can get Hodges in, this would be an excellent move for this franchise. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, I think we touched on it a little bit earlier, uh, the depth that he provides. David, what is your thoughts on that, like uh, uh, on Justin's take? Well, you know, Justin, I actually agree with you. I mean, um, there are stats that show that Gerald Hodges actually shows more productivity than any linebacker we have on the roster right now. And yep. um, he – what? I said, yep. Oh, well, yeah, but, you know, he shows more productivity. He's more versatile. He's more athletic. And um, he would obviously... And he's probably, young, too. Young. He, he is young. You're Very right. Young. And honestly, I think he would be a future leader and actually fill David Harris's shoes the right way. Yes, and, um, you have to, and it, well, yeah, and you have to understand where he came from. He came, he came from the shamble San Francisco 49ers, and he was one of the few playmakers there. So you bring this guy in to Kevin Green's linebacking linebacker system, 
I honestly mm-hmm. think that that would be an excellent move. And yeah, if we can surround him with guys like Leonard Williams and guys like Muhammad Wilkerson, is only going to help guys like that. Exactly. You know, surrounded by future leaders and young talent on this defense will actually increase productivity on this defense and actually have a younger, more efficient defense rather than a defense with old, old veterans who are just they're just gone. <laughs> Darrell Rivas. But, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. um, I want to get your thoughts now on this um, on the special teams because obviously this draft, I mean, as he keep brought it on earlier, I think this draft actually is going to upgrade our special teams immensely since we actually drafted a lot of later round guys who could actually be a good impact on that. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, the linebacker we got, I think he's definitely going to impact on special teams. I mean, even even the running back we got in the later rounds, I mean, could he play special teams? I haven't heard too much about that. I know he might be able to return. Elijah McGuire? Yep. Does he play special yeah. teams? How is he in Gunner kind of position? He, he's, well, what I'll say about him, at least in my opinion, I think he'll by far be uh, his best possible role at kick returner and punt returner. He's got yep. blazing speed and he's got good footwork and good vision. Uh, I don't think he would be a starting running back in the NFL, though, primarily because I, of his I, size. I, I'm going to have to say he's not going to be a starting running back, but I, I happen to I like what he brings to the table as running back number three. He has a little yep. bit of everything I in agree. the game. So, I yeah. mean, I think he could be running back three easily because he can patch, catch, catch his passes out of the backfield. He can, he can run. He can, he can do a little bit of everything. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you. And I think that's something that the Jets may necessarily be missing. We have Matt Forte. We have the Lau Pal. And, like, obviously, Elijah McGuire. You know, Forte and Pal, they're kind of those patient runners, the gliders, as people like to call them. We really haven't had that home run guy in a very long time, maybe since Leon Washington. A guy like that, who was also a kick returner, punt returner, made his name like that, came in, ran the ball from time to time. Uh, maybe another piece that John Morton can start incorporating into his offense. And I think that leads us in perfectly into our next topic. Let's talk about Jordan Leggett and the effect that he will make on his offense, knowing that John Morton loves to use the tight end. We saw him work with Jimmy Graham in New Orleans. A lot of people may say, oh, that's not true. He was the wide receiver coach. So you could sit here mm-hmm. and tell me that Jimmy Graham wasn't learning those wide receiver routes? Like, no, he, yeah, was, I don't, he was the I don't number one guy. Yeah, that, catching tight end. He, yeah. he loves to use the tight end, and you, you guys might have heard the press conferences. They're going to try, try to use the tight end position. I mean, pass, coming out of passing touches from where he came from in Clemson doesn't really concern me. Where I'm concerned with Jordan Leggett is the blocking. That's what concerns me. But pass catching, anything would be an upgrade, and I think he, he's going to catch around 30 balls this year. I mean, 30 to 40. I think that's a uh, hundred times better than what we've had in previous years. Uh, David, yeah, uh, upgrade. Fact check it real quick, but I would say that the Jets' tight end position this eight. year eight, has less than ten catches. Eight, I yeah, it's, I think it's. Eight. it's eight. I think well, it's we remember Chang Gailey used our tight end specifically for run blocking, but you know, yeah, Justin but actually, we also had Ryan Fitzpatrick too. I mean, we had no one to get the tight end the ball. Yes, Ryan Fitz tragic. I think that I think that that topic is well well out the window, and he's yeah, still let's, outside. Let's not do that right now, he's, please. And he's still I outside. Baron Leggett with uh, ASJ when he comes back from the suspension with these wide receivers we got. I mean, geez, I think the offense could be more good than people are giving us credit for. Yeah, I think that all depends on how uh, Han Solo himself plays in Christian Hackenberg. Yeah, agreed. But Justin, do you do you actually see Jordan Leggett? I mean, with ASJ and Brandon Boss suspended, do you see Jordan Leggett possibly filling a starting role and possibly making an impact wait, in that wait, spot? Wait, wait. Let's just get things out of the way. You know, Brandon Bostic's not on this team anymore, right? He's not oh, under contract. Yeah. Uh, so I'm making he's not. The, the, okay, our tight ends have been our tight ends have been pretty much invisible. That like I haven't even know what's going on with them. So. Oh, David, I'm not. I'm not even going to criticize you for that. I thought he was on the team. I honestly yeah. did. So, no, no, he was wow. unrestricted, unrestricted free agent, and then four games suspension probably did a doing of the Jets re-signing him. So. Oh, they they yeah. actually they did, yeah I remember they probably did release him. Well, wow, our tight ends pretty much did no productivity last year. That I even forgot yeah, like what's been going on with them. Goddamn. 
to answer your question, yeah, Leahy could be discarded come day one with ASA not playing, absolutely. Without a doubt, who else is going to be? Tomlinson? Hello, no. No. There's no, no one else. Hey, 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 don't forget, don't forget Hall of, future Hall of Famer. I can guarantee you that right now. Braden <laughs> Bowman. Guarantee you that right now, future Hall yeah. of Famer. Yeah, Brandon Bowman. Did, did the guy? Did, did the guy? People even notice he was on the field last year. I mean, come on. Well, I noticed him for uh, a few plays. I don't. I don't even think he ever played a snap. I'm pretty sure he failed that physical after we signed no, him. No, no. I, I I actually saw him for like one play against the um, Seattle Seahawks. Did he, did he do that? Up. Yeah, I think um, he, Fitzpatrick threw a pass to him, and then well, Chandler got, broke it up. What do you guys think the Dexter move to safety possibly? Move who to safety? Dexter. Dexter, Dexter McDougal. Yeah. yeah, I know who you're talking about. Um, I uh, mean, correct me if I'm wrong. He, he is he on the roster still? Yep, <laughs> is he, yes, yes, sir. He's he is. still around. Yes, yeah, sir. Yep. Wow. Oh yeah, he is. That's right. Did we cut him last year and then re-sign him? Is that what yep. we did? Yeah, we did. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, he was just so irrelevant last year. I totally forgot about him. Yeah, I don't think he'll even make. I don't know if he'll, I don't think he'd make the team. I don't know. Probably not. Yeah, well, that's I mean, a shame. Well, that's yeah, a shame. I mean, his his highlights on the special teams defense. I mean, you never know what could happen now. I mean, uh, I yeah, think he'd be just. You gotta see how he plays in the training camp, but yeah, yeah. I mean, looking right now, uh, we have a lot of. I know this is obviously in the middle. I'm, of the I'm gonna off give season. you a bold prediction. I think the guy from Michigan could could possibly potentially beat out someone for a starter. If his injury heals properly, I mean that guy was doing some serious damage in Michigan. I don't, th- I don't think he'll be a starter year one, but I think David and Ben, if he ever comes on the show, can attest to this that I talked about Jeremy Clark a lot. David, isn't that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like this dude a lot. I had him and you know, shout out to Jet Nation Radio, Joey Blewett, uh, his show with Glenn. They have a really good show, so shout out to them. Uh, in a mock draft that I did on their show as a little contest, I I don't think I ended up getting one pick right. Uh, I did select uh, Jeremy Clark, but I ended up changing that later to like a kicker or something in the set, sixth round, I think. But this was a guy who I saw, I liked him. Besides his ACL injury, he probably would have been a third or fourth round pick. Mm-hmm. Big physical press corner, exactly what Todd Bowles is looking for. And I think we talked about it enough last week, but quickly I'll touch on it. Todd Bowles is starting to put together his gumbo soup of uh, NFL defense, as I like to call it. You know, he's stirring the pot. He put in Jamal Adams, Marcus May, Deron Lee. Uh, He brought the difference maker in Leonard Williams like he had in Calais Campbell in uh, Arizona. Then, obviously, the interchangeable safeties in Tyron Matthew and Tony Jefferson, very similar to Jamal Adams and Marcus May. I'm not saying that Marcus May is anywhere near Tyron Matthew or Tony Jefferson, Jamal Adams, might, Jamal Adams might be, but I don't know about Marcus May. But he is definitely drafting with reason. He's definitely drafting with claws. And I think that's fair to say. So I'm excited about Jeremy Clark as well, and I think you're right. I think he could come in. Uh, I don't know if he'll start, but I think he can definitely come in and be like a good three or four for us. Just get healthy, learn the game, uh, get your speed back, get your stability back, and year two may be a big one for him. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe we stash him on the practice squad if the injury doesn't heal right, or yep. we try to stash him on the practice squad. But I don't, I don't know. Someone might claim him. We got to see what where the roster spots and what happens in training camp. All right, uh, we got a little off topic. We were talking about Jordan Leggett. Let's go back to that. Um, you know, we talked about Jimmy Graham and how John Morton likes to use tight ends. We saw it with Kobe Fleener. Uh, you know that uh, this past year, uh, unfortunately, Kobe Fleener can't catch anything. That's what that's what uh, we learned uh, over this past year for the Saints offense. I don't know if any of you guys watch Saints games, but I'm a big fan of Drew Brees, so I commonly tuned in, and he just dropped a lot of balls. Uh, hopefully, yeah, Jordan yeah. Leggett won't. Hopefully, Jordan Leggett won't be that. But you, you look at the. I mean, Jordan Leggett is changing his number. He already said it, so he won't be wearing that 47, reminding you of Kellen Davis dropping passes. So you won't have to worry about him wearing number 47 with the Colin Davis number. Yeah, that's uh, – David, you brought up Chan Gailey wanting to use, like, uh, pass-blocking tight ends. We had a pass-blocking tight end who couldn't block for the pass. It was it was amazing. Um, thanks, Chan Gailey. 
uh, sorry you're gone. I'm kind of not, actually. But yeah, it seems that John Moran has this uh, prototype that we see uh, in the tight ends that he likes. Not a great blocker, big physical guy who can go up and get the ball where I'll take this directly from Madden. Please don't sue us, EA Sports. Uh, if you're listening, thank you. But uh, Charles, uh, God, what's his name? Uh, David, what's his name? The guy for Fox and the guy on uh, Madden, uh, Charles something. David, no? All right, David, David's computer crashed once again. Uh, Justin, do you play Madden? Uh, I'll have to Google this real quick. This is going to bother me. Yeah. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Kyle, is it Charlie Gunn? Is that his name? No, it's uh, Charles. Crap. Yeah. Oh, whatever. I, uh, his quote is, you know, you got to throw it, you got to put it up top where the kids can't get it. Uh, I think that's what Jordan like it is. I think that's what yeah, Jimmy Graham. Yeah, big body. Yeah. Oh, I big haven't played Madden in a receiver. while, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> Yeah, not, I was not a guard. Jordan Leggett with freaking ASJ, two big bodies. Then they had Quincy and Robbie in there. Come on, in the red zone, that could be some serious damage if we ever get a quarterback. Yeah, and I, I, that's why I wanted Tyrod Taylor so badly this off season because you look at the weapons we have. Uh, and like I said, we're getting a little off topic here, but it's it's nice to talk about the good things that the Jets have for once. Uh, Decker went healthy. You know, he had 1,000 yards with Geno Smith. Let's not clinch at that. Alex, sure. thank you so much. Charles Davis, uh, that's, oh, who, that, yeah, that's yeah, who said yeah, the yeah. quote. Um, thank you, Alex, tweeting away at us as he's patiently waiting online. So, Justin, we're going to have to kick you off soon. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Uh, oh, the nice things about the Jets. Yeah, Eric Decker, 1,000 yards with Geno Smith. Let's not let's just not act like that's supposed to happen. When Geno Smith is your quarterback, no offense to him, all offense to him actually. Stop that. Uh, uh, <laughs> you're still a little, you're still a little salty about that one. Um, Quincy Nuwa at number two, Robbie Anderson number three, and then the guys we drafted this year in a competition with Jerome Peake, Jalen Marshall. Obviously, Devin Smith won't be in the mix, but man, now those four and five guys are going to be very solid four and five guys. That's I think guys we, keep, I think we, keep and special teams players too. Yeah, so the wide receiver, you know, I think we're lacking a true number one. We can, you know, we're I think, really... I say keep two tight ends and seven receivers. That's my early prediction before training camp starts, but... Oh, but I, thought I, you were ta- I thought you were talking about formations on the field. I'm like, yeah, I mean, that, that could yeah, work. I, I, mean, I, like five, I like a lot of five receiver wides, actually, to be honest. But Morton, with the two tight end formation, use five receivers. But Morton, what Morton likes to run. Yeah, and, you know... You know, just to make an example out of that, and Justin, we are going to have to let you go fairly soon. Um, You know, we could go out there and have, you know, Decker in line, you know, have him run some routes over the middle, have Quincy and Robbie on the outside, or Darius Stewart a little bit on the outside, you know, in between Decker and uh, Robbie or, you know, Decker and Quincy, and then Chad Hansen playing the other side of Eric Decker, you know, basically what he does, because they're basically the carbon copy of each other, let's be honest. Uh, and then Bilal Powell coming out of the backfield, or possibly Jordan Leggett. I mean, the possibilities are endless for John Morton to work here. All right, uh, it all depends on how Christian Hackenberg plays, and I think that's been the biggest problem for the Jets over the years and years and years uh, since Joe Willie Namath, basically. Uh, yeah. So we'll hope for the best. Uh, I, gu- the I guarantee you, we have more wins than last year. Uh, I guarantee you. For these people saying we're going to have three wins this year. They, they don't have no idea what they're talking about because I see us winning. More, we're not going to lose more games than I, next year. Next year. That chant is entirely too long, but it is well-deserved. All right, Justin, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. You brought some fire tonight. You didn't start too much controversy, and you didn't yell at us. So that's, that's mm-hmm. good. That's progress. So go ahead. Uh, shout out all your social media. You definitely deserve it tonight, and thanks for calling in, man. All right, uh, Twitter at Justin2413. Make sure you guys get your Jamal Adams jerseys because the guy's going to be a stud. I'm ordering mine tomorrow, so make sure you guys get your Jamal Adams jersey because that's one you're going to get a lot of wear and tear out of. Absolutely. All right, man, thanks for coming on. All right, good stuff. All right, and once again, that was Justin. Thank you so much, Dan, for coming on. Uh, David, before we cap Alex on, because he's the next caller on the line, thank you for everybody who's calling in tonight. Uh, that comes from me, David, and, of course, Mr. Ben Blattington. Um, Real talk for a second. Jerseys. 
Um, cool or not? What do you mean by jerseys? Like in general, like what do you mean? Like jerseys, NFL jerseys. Like he said he was about to go get himself a Jamal Adams jersey. But Jam- like, uh, here's my take on it. I get t-shirts usually. I like just t-shirts because one, uh, players are usually gone within five years. So, you know, and when you're a grown man, you're usually not changing size that much. Obviously, for people like me and you, we're fairly young. Um, we're growing, so, you know, jerseys may not be the best option. But even, even if I was a grown man, which obviously I'm not, you can tell by my voice and my creepy best in face, uh, I would never buy a jersey. I just, you know, you're wearing like a grown man's name on your back. And I don't know. Do you, do you wear jerseys? Well, I mean, if you watch my videos, I actually wore my Brandon Marshall jersey to um, games. But that's why this year I actually might want to – I might want to consider getting a customized jersey and having my name on the back. Oh, DJ I David Matz? Can we put DJ David Matz on the back of jersey? I actually DJ tried on NFL.com, and um, it Let's would not that. fit. It would not fit on there. I, I, I've actually tried to put Gangrene David on the back of it. It wouldn't work. David, you know what I'll do for you? Um what? I'll get my handy-dandy Photoshop opened up, because you know how good I am with that. Yeah. Uh, just look at all my Instagram pictures. Get rid of my double chin in an instant. Uh, I will make you a Gang Green David template, and you can, like, put it on, like, a custom T-shirt maker. I won't, like, say a company name or anything. Do that, like, I don't know. I'm more, I'm more of a jersey kind of guy. I mean, uh, you, can't, you can't get NFL player jerseys because, yeah, you, like you said, they've actually... They don't last long, but... Uh, well, if you want to get a jersey, I would advise getting a customized jersey. I mean, my, my a good friend, Norb Cam, of my, well, he's a good friend of mine. No, no, we're not shouting out Seahawks, dudes, David. Come on. <laughs> well, he's a very humble, he's a very humble man, but I'm not specifically relating to, like, I'm just using him as an example. I mean, he goes to games wearing customized jerseys, and that actually lasts longer, so. I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely, I mean, <laughs> unless you pass away or something. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> thank God, that's terrible. Uh, it won't, it won't go out of style or out of relevance, to say the least. Uh, before we get to Alex, just got to go ahead and give a quick shout out. Uh, get your brand new Winters is Coming Rarest of Breeds t-shirt from NYJFshop.com. Uh, it is the new t-shirt from NYJetsFans.com. Jay, he always calls into our show, a good friend of ours. He just dropped some new heat featuring Brian Winters, obviously Game of Thrones speak. Uh, Game of Thrones scene. Wow, can't speak. Uh, so for all of you uh, Game of Thrones fans and all of you Jets fans, this is a shirt for you. Uh, Brian Winters is featured in his, you know, uh, meanest looking form with the expression Winters is coming. Uh, the first 100 orders come with a free hand-signed Brian Winters autograph printout of the design on a beautiful gloss. It's great. You can frame it, put it in your man cave. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. Once again, you can find it at nyjfshop.com. Uh, it should be on the feature page. If it's not, scroll through. You'll find it. Uh, and David, uh, I definitely told you this before, for our listeners, we will be having the designer of basically all of nyjetsfans.com shirts, Ellie Garrard, on the show. I believe I brought it up this episode. Uh, we will have him on in the next coming weeks to talk about his newest designs. We'll promote that a little bit. Uh, but once again, go and buy the shirt. You know, Thrones fans, Jets fans, this is the one for you. And, you know, just a great player in Brian Winters. Give him some support. He deserves it. Uh, offensive linemen are people, too. All right. Let's go on to our next caller tonight. Actually, wait, wait. I'm, I'm sorry, Alex. Um, before we bring you on, thank you for waiting patiently. Um, I actually just want to say one more thing about um, Jay and his um, awesome website. Um, Honorable hopefully, Honorable yeah. Yes. Well, hopefully I can be able to – pull this off, and I can be able to do this with them and um, with oh, 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 this group. What are, you about, what are you about to say? I don't want to have to go and crop something tonight. So Kyle, sure you, Kyle, relax. Go but ahead. but um, he, but um, those of you Jet fans that are living out in the East Coast and are looking for, looking for a road game to go to, um, he is actually um, planning a trip on opening day to... Buffalo, New York, for the Jet home yep. opener, and um, you can find more information about that on JetsRoadTrips.com. Um, it is three hundred twenty-five dollars for bus, ticket, T-shirt, tailgate, and party. Um, if you want to know more, you can message Jay, and um, he'll explain. But um, it, I hope I can actually I actually want to do this myself. I would actually love to go on that. 
hopefully my parents will let me in. I think it, it would even be convenient since I wouldn't ha even have class the next day. But, you know, it sounds like a great weekend. I would definitely do it, and I hope I can pull it off. So um, if, you live in the, um, if you live in the eastern area, if you live in Jersey, New York, if you live by MetLife Stadium, you're a loyal, diehard fan, why don't you check that out? You can go on to JetsRoadTrips.com and check it out. Yeah, absolutely. And that is the Buffalo package. That's how Jay is promoting that one. He is a genius when it comes to that stuff. So if you want to go support the Jets week one, uh, it's going to be a long season. They're going to need your support. They're going to need all the hope they can get. Uh, so go and check that out. That should also be on the feature page, uh, nyjetsfans.com. All right, now we will bring on Alex, a good buddy Alex. Alex, thank you for waiting so patiently, man. Uh, sorry to make you wait a little bit there. Um, and thanks for coming on the show. What's going on? Hey, what's up, fellas? How we doing? Thanks for having me on. We're doing pretty good. Uh, the Jets are officially undefeated so far throughout the offseason. In fact, I would be willing to say that we're winning the Super Bowl because we got one of the best players in the draft. Uh, so that's where I stand at this point. Absolutely. And Jamal... Jamal Adams is definitely going to be a stud. Um, I really can't wait. Um, you know, we got to wait four months now. It's going to be a brutal four months. But when he gets out there, I think everyone's going to really see what kind of pedigree that we have. You know, he comes from, you know, George Adams was a professional. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that he was grown up into seeing. And I think that's what we're going to get when he comes out into the field. And I think everyone's really going to kind of just – you know, feel his energy, and it's going to permeate through that locker room and onto the field. And I think, you know, a lot of other players are going to end up playing, you know, at a higher level with Jamal Adams and his intensity. Yeah, I think absolutely. Uh, just a quick note, and I'm going to go ahead and say this with complete 100% confidence. Uh, the last LSU first-round pick to come out of the draft with pedigree like that, can anybody think of it? Tyrone Matthew? No, first round pick. Oh, first round pick? Um, yeah. Pedigree. Pedigree, pedigree. I should know this too because I know He's DB also New in New York, but he's not on the Jets. I see you. Come on, guys. Come on. No, oh, you got me. You got me. Sam. OBJ. Ah, uh, okay. Yes, oh, indeed. Yes, indeed. I thought I, I was thinking you, I defensive. To... No, no, I just meant LSU. I thinking like you meant like Jet play. Oh, you just meant LSU in general. Yeah. Like, who's the last player like to just come onto a New York team? I got you, I got you. Yeah, he came from pedigree, too, so that, that uh, definitely gives me good hope. But, uh, Alex, like, you, like we said multiple times, he's been on hold for a while. We're sorry for that. Uh, but I'm sure you definitely heard most of the conversations. Uh, but let's start with the Gerald Hodgins. Uh, visiting town, you know, uh, hopefully we get him signed. We'll, he'll provide good depth. What's your take on it? Yeah, you know, I think it would be a very good depth move. Uh, get somebody with his, you know, his caliber. Obviously, I think he's around 26, so the youth is good. You know, if he pans out and he ends up being a player that, you know, could be an understudy to David Harris this year, work his way into the offense maybe next year, I mean defense next year, uh, I think it would be a good move. Um, you know, I'm Obviously, he's not going to completely change the way that we're going to be uh, running our offense this year. But I think at the end of the day, um, you know, bringing him on would be, you know, just a solid signing. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Uh, let's go into the safety thing because I think we've talked about the Gerald Hodges thing a little too much tonight. Uh, who do you see being the starting two safeties for us day one? Oof. Very good question. Uh, you know, at this point, I think Calvin Pryor still has his job until proven otherwise. So, uh, you know, maybe May would be the one that would be subbing in, but that could change. You know, if, if we end up having, you know, a, a similar beginning season uh, as we did last season and we're only winning like, you know, a game or two or three games by, by mid-season, then, you know, possibly you will see May and uh, Jamal Adams starting, you know, week to week. And Pryor will be the one working his way in on situational, you know, nickel packages and dime packages. Um, or, you know, the, the techniques when they're putting in three safeties. 
So I think Alvin Pryor has his job, and it's his to lose. Uh, so I would think that Jamal Adams would probably be just a step ahead of uh, May at this point. Okay, so if, like you said, Calvin Pryor, I guess, you know, just coming into this, he's proven more than Marcus May, to say. Um, and I think, obviously, we could assume that Jamal Adams is better than Calvin Pryor. I think that's safe to say. Um, how do you think we would use Calvin Pryor, then? Uh, I think that, you know, mainly he, he could be used in the box. I think that he would be, you know, they, they did run a lot of cover two uh, zone schemes at certain points last year. So I think that he could still do things like that. And then maybe you'd use uh, Jamal Adams as your, as your joker uh, safety where he can go and play man coverage. He can go play side, inside the box. And then you could leave May as a free safety in either a, you know, cover two, two high scheme or single high where, you know, you could actually use uh, – both of those safeties in, in, in a, you know, all-out blitz. So I think it's going to be very interesting, and this is kind of what Todd Bowles has needed because the way that he has run his defenses in the past and been successful is he's had versatile players that, you know, are interchangeable where you can move them around and they can still be effective. And I think now uh, where May can be, you know, he's more of a free safety, but he can play the strong position if, if you asked him to. And we all know that Adams can pretty much do any position, probably except for playing defensive line. Uh, <laughs> and then you have Calvin Pryor that we just know is a, is a hard hitter. So I think that his role will mainly be read and react for the running game. And if they're going to do anything with him in the covered scheme, he probably will not be playing man as much anymore and probably just dropping back and being support to, you know, players on the outside, you know, whether it be – you know, Marcus Williams playing as the number two and Claiborne, you know, and giving, you know, deep support on the outside to our cornerbacks that will more than likely be playing a press scheme. And do you think Todd Bowles would be okay with that? Or do you think he'd rather go maybe the traditional way of free safety, strong safety, instead of strong safety who's very versatile and a box safety? Well, I, I would say that it all depends on, on what kind of scheme and how he wants to be effective against certain defenses. I mean, there's going to be times where, you know, when we play against the Patriots, they like to spread the field out and their running backs become wide receivers. So you're going to have to have situations where, you know, a defensive lineman or a linebacker is going to have to come off the field and you're going to have to get that extra defensive back out there just because, you know, look at all the weapons that New England has at this point. Brandon Cooks, they have uh, Edelman, they have Hogan. They still have Every, Blanc. Every, every, now they, they, you know, and then you can name all the different types of receiving running backs that they have that also can motion and come out and be an extra wide receiver. So at this point, you know, we're probably going to be in a lot more type nickel style packages, maybe like a three, 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 where three defensive linemen, three linebackers, and three safeties with our two guys on the outside being Claiborne and Marcus Williams. I'm probably going to see a lot of those style uh, formations this year. And, you know, that's kind of where this league is going. It's more of a passing league. So, you know, you have to adapt and adjust to what other teams are doing. So the traditional, you know, 4-3 and 3-4 schemes are being modified with these hybrid style safeties that can come in and play in the box, kind of, you know, what we have with uh, Adams at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you brought up the corner position a little bit. Uh, outside of Morris Claiborne, what do you think is going to happen at the number two? I believe you said Marcus Williams, but, you know, there's, there are some guys out there who are definitely pushing for that starting job. You know, Buster Screen, he did improve a lot last year when he did it, but I'm sure he would definitely still uh, get another opportunity and he'll be fighting for it, but hopefully he'll be playing our nickel. So an exception to Buster Screen, do you, do you think there's any realistic chance guys like Justin Burris or Daryl Roberts come on and compete with Marcus Williams to be that number two, or maybe even a younger guy like Jeremy Clark if he recovers. I, I would absolutely love a scenario where Justin Burris comes in and, and takes the, the number two position this year. Uh, we, we know he has the measurables, and that's the type of defensive back that Todd Bowles likes. That's you know his, his model for what he thinks that the cornerback position should be. Uh, I've 
express my, you know, just malcontent toward Marcus Williams. And I think he plays a little bit soft for this style of scheme. And at, at the end of the day, they put a tender on him for a million and a half or $2 million. So we're really not invested a lot into the guy, but as a drop back zone style cover corner, Marcus Williams is very good, and we do know that he has good ball skills, and he will go after. If he, if he reads a play, he will go for the interception. So you like that element in the player. Unfortunately, he is not as physical as probably Todd Bowles would like, and I don't think he does well on the man press as well. So, you know, I don't know if he fits the right scheme, but when you look at this roster and you look at what we have, we know Buster Screen belongs in on the, as a nickel corner. That's where he's most comfortable. That's where he gets his best play. So the next man up, I think, is the number two would be Marcus Williams. But, you know, let's go with Justin Burris. I'd love to see him, you know, have a better training camp and and do some things in preseason and earn himself that number two. Because when you look at the depth with Marcus Claiborne's injury history, it's not bad to have players like Buster Screen and Marcus Williams to, you know, step up, you know, next man up. Uh, thought process here if Claiborne goes down and hopefully Justin Burris will be ready to, you know, take his role as the solidified number two. Yeah, that would be good. David, uh, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, Alex, um, thank you for calling in, man. It's been a while, and um, I actually agree with you on the safety package. Um, you know, Calvin Price still got one year left on this team, and we have two versatile safeties who could be potentially day one starters. So I honestly agree with you. Think that we can use a three-three-three package, meaning like three corners, three safeties, three Total defensive linemen. <sighs> Kyle, no. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, you're right. This um, this league has become more of a passing league in terms of like pretty much just going more in terms of passing the ball and really running the ball. Since like I think the value of running backs are digressing. So I think the best way to fit that system is to have Calvin Pryor play more in his true role, which is playing in the box. And then have Marcus May and Jamal Adams playing in the backfield. But, you know, these possibilities are endless because, you know, Calvin Pryor, um, Jamal Adams, and Marcus May, they're all interchangeable safeties like you brought up. And, um, you know, you could have different packages with these with these guys. You could have, like, Pryor and Adams. You could have even May and Pryor. Any package can be possible. And you could use all these guys to their advantage and to the best of their ability. And even the corner play, man, I mean, I actually agree with you. Buster Screen, we've act, we've obviously seen that he is a true nickel corner. And um, I'm honestly glad that we have now a young corner tandem in Morris Claiborne and Marcus Williams. Because like you said, Marcus Williams, he is obviously a great drop-back corner. He has great ball hawk skills. You saw it in 2015, and you saw it last year, too. And honestly, I would actually really like to see what he can do in number two corner. You know, he's, there's obviously some things he has to work on. But, you know, I think the kid will progress, and um, I think he could be a good player. And I know there's a reason why Mac signed him or gave him a um, second-round tender or whatever that is. But I want to get your thoughts on um, another player going into the linebackers, um, Bruce Carter. Now that Kevin Green is in and now that Bruce Carter is re-signed, this guy has an upside to him from last year. Great special teams player, and he was a great fill-in for a lot of the injured linebackers we have. What are your thoughts on him coming into the season and possibly Kevin Green really working on him? Do you think Kevin Green could potentially develop Bruce Carter into becoming a possible good Jet linebacker? I definitely believe it is. I think he was, uh, you know, sold a a little short last year because he was banged up. He was battling through some injuries early on. And, you know, he tried to get in there as much as he could. And it's tough to see, you know, special teams guys flash because, they only, they're only in there for about 10 seconds at a pop and you have to do something within that, you know, that time frame. But with a player like him and we know that we need serious improvement uh, with our special teams. And when I look at the back end of our draft, you know, Donahue, uh, Derek Jones uh, and McGuire, these players, they're all going to be contributing, I believe right away to our special teams as well. And I think that, we should see a big improvement and a step up from what we saw last year. And it begins with guys like Bruce Carter. And yes, I do believe that Kevin Green was a very, very good uh, move for them to bring in a guy of his intensity, his experience, 
and can kind of light a fire back into this team because that was a lot of things that I thought was missing last year. It didn't seem like there was a lot of passion going on. Guys weren't, you know, playing, playing up each other or trying to, you know, bring each other up. Did not see a lot of intensity or a vocal leader. So it's good to have, like, a player coach kind of, you know, with Kevin Green, and he can – bring that energy and bring his knowledge into the game into players like Bruce Carter. And then hopefully he can, you know, be a mentor to some of these other guys and bring us to the next level because we definitely need improvements in all aspects. And special teams is one of the most important things that always seems to get neglected, uh, you know, and you don't notice it until something bad happens. And we saw a lot of bad things happen on special teams last year. So Bruce Carter was a solid uh, move to bring him back. Spin zone. David, sorry to cut you off if you were going to say something. I uh, was. <laughs> spin zone. All right, here's my daily spin zone. I'll only do one today. Um, Kevin Green is going to be the, oh, God, what's his name? Running back coach for the Bills. Somebody tell me his name. I'm terrible with names. Uh, he was the running back coach of the Bills last year. Um, he used to be for the Jets, too. Then he got called up to the offensive coordinator. Now he's like a head coach somewhere. What's his name? Nobody? Really? No. Nope. Nope. Come oh, God. <laughs> All right. Met, well, anyway. You got to go back to Google. Now, <laughs> now right. I have to look that up. Um, okay. All right. David, David well, here's Stahl, a, here's a filler. Yeah. Okay. Here's well, a filler. Um, I, I, I sent a message to the uh, Jet Take before. Yeah, um, yeah. Said, tr- tr- it, you sent you sent a message regarding Matt. I haven't played Matt in a while. I was like trying to think of the commentators' names, like Charles Davis and Brandon Gauton. I was like, oh, there you go. But anyway, though, right. Alex, um, back Anthony on the topic. Lynn. Anthony Lynn. That just came to me. Actually, didn't Google it. Anthony Lynn, right? Used to be for the Jets too. I, think I believe so. That's right. correct. Yeah. That's, okay. That's, so sounds, he was, that sounds right. He was the running back coach for Buffalo last year. Then when they fired their offense coordinator, he became the offensive coordinator. And then when Rex got canned, he there became he, the head there coach. There it is. Yeah. Oh, and, then, and now he's the head, I believe now he's the head coach somewhere else. But anyway, spin zone. Uh, Kevin Green, when he gets upgraded to defensive coordinator because Casey Rogers gets fired, and then Todd Bowles gets fired at the end of the year because Woody Johnson reneges on his – oh, we're, we're not measuring in wins, we're measuring in how much they have grown, because we all know Woody Johnson's going to do that, uh, Kevin Green becomes our head coach. And the Hall of Famer gets inducted twice, one as a player and one as a coach. Don't even know if that's possible, but it's going to happen, because uh, I believe in God. <laughs> Spin zone. Spin zone. Spin zone Fahey, and I, I think Kyle's trying to get to the fact that Kevin Green will probably go on a similar path. Anthony Anthony Lynn went, so first being he a very well position could. coach, then being a defensive coordinator, then being a head coach. Okay, I can see where he's getting out, but I'm um, actually, Alex, going back to your take um, about these young guys really going out there and putting their hearts out, this is what I'm actually excited for to see this year. I'm excited to see these guys go out there and do what these old veterans couldn't do, and that's bust their ass and play hard and put in the effort on that football field. Because last year they did not do that. Last year we thought that this team was going to be a win-now team, but instead this team was banged up by injuries and minimal to no effort by these players at all. So they were gone, and now we're embracing the rebuild with these young guys, and the fact that the fans are saying this is going to be a wasted season, it's not. And I've been trying to bring up this point. I, I don't want to see a season go to waste. I want to see these new young guys from the draft class go in there and work hard. Offense, defense, even the special teams. Because I think this draft even immensely helped our, our special teams because our special teams was terrible last year. You're right. I mean, what are your thoughts, yeah, Kyle? Yeah, 100%. What was your point, David, exactly? Oh, my God. No, uh, what was the point you were trying to make? I was trying to say that this season should be a season to be scouting these young guys and to see how well they could fit into our system. Uh, okay, I thought you went like on a little Woody Johnson rant. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that's fair. Um, I deserve that. I deserve that. Um, suck for Sam. I'm on the campaign because 
We'll develop these players. We'll get Sam Darnold, and we'll give him a year to develop. And then we'll have Quincy Noir, Robbie Anderson, Sam Darnold, and, they, you know, screw Peyton Manning, Marshall Falk, and Reggie Wayne, or Marvin Harrison. I mean, it was Marvin Harrison. Um, that's going to be the new it thing. Sam Darnold, Quincy Noir, and Robbie Anderson. We don't even need a running back because Sam Darnold's going to be throwing 40 touchdowns a year. These are just facts. Just letting you know. I'll post on Twitter. Oh, I'm going to post this on Twitter right now. Go ahead. I'll take it to the grave. Yeah, I, th- I think you're right, else, though. Uh? Yeah, I think you're right, though. Uh, uh, and, you know, in all honesty, this is a year we're not going to do well. We're not going to have over six wins. That's my projection. Uh, when we did the schedule breakdown, I think I ended up having us two or three. I don't remember exactly. If Ben was here, uh, I'm sure he would, you know, try and correct me on something. But, you know, he isn't tonight for various reasons. Um, so, yeah, I think this is a year where we need to develop our guys, get everybody in shape, because eventually, eventually, David, I don't know when it will be, but eventually we will get our quarterback. And we need to have good players around him for when that happens so we can start making legitimate runs. One thing I'll make uh, before, you know, we go into the next topic. The Colts have completely mismanaged Andrew Luck's whole career. Let's be honest. Andrew Luck is elite. I don't care what you guys say about injuries. That dude plays through everything. He had one of the most serious uh, shoulder injuries you can get. He denied it for almost two years and didn't get surgery. He played almost every game. Uh, The dude's a trooper. And the best player they have on offense, an exception to him, is T.Y. Hilton, who is the number two wide receiver at best in any other offense. So, I mean, we, we can't have that situation. We can't go and get a guy like Sam Darnold or Josh Rosen or Josh Allen or maybe uh, Luke Falk from Washington State or any other guys that are coming out next year. We can't have that situation. So we need to go ahead and develop the guys that we have right now. I think we started to do that on defense with Leonard Williams, Jamal Adams, Jerron Lee, uh, and now we need to start doing it on offense. Quincy Nguyen, Robbie Anderson. Brian Winters, Wesley Johnson. We see it starting to happen. Jordan Leggett. It's starting to happen. We will get our quarterback soon. And that's all I'm going to say. Any other topics right, you want to talk about, Alex? Uh, yeah, what I tweeted you guys before, and I asked you a question on who would you guys want your starting four wide receivers to be going into 2017? Ooh. With who would I want? Them. Yep. On the roster or uh, in the NBA, or in the NFL? All right, we'll go si- situational. You know, it's third and ten, and we're running a spread offense here, and we have four wide receivers on the field. Who are the four guys you want? Uh, David, do you want to go first, or do you want me to take this? Um, I would probably have to go Decker. Okay, I guess I'm gonna keep taking this. <laughs> I'll probably have to go Decker because Decker is a major third down threat. Um, Major key. Major key alert. Exactly. That, and that was actually one of the things that I like about Eric Decker. Um, Quincy Nunwa, um, Robbie Anderson, and Adaria Stewart. Ooh. Where are you, Kyle? So, so are the big names. Um, I'm going to go with uh, one Eric Decker because uh, I think he's the best white wide receiver in the game. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm Spin down zone. that. <laughs> Spin zone, he's the only white wide receiver in the game that I can even think of. Uh, oh, Chad Hansen. Chad Hansen is carbon copy. I guess that's basically just like looking in the mirror, though. I think that's safe to say. Um, Eric Decker, uh, best hands in the NFL, hands down. Uh, actually, hands up, because you have to catch the ball. So I definitely want him. I, re- I trust him. I know he's not going to drop the ball. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll go Quincy. Because I think at this point in his career, he hasn't dropped the ball too much. He used to when he was young, but I trust him now. Uh, Robbie on third down, I would not. Uh, I don't think you can get any use out of Robbie on third down. Robbie's a burner uh, at the best. Maybe a slant route, but I still not, I'm not taking the risk of him going over the middle and getting popped by a guy like Luke Keekley or something. Um, so, Sharon Peak, big body type of guy. Uh, not sure where his hands quite are because, I, honestly, we just haven't been able to see him play, uh, play that much in exception to the preseason. But based off his big body and what he can do in traffic, 
Jerome Peak, and then probably Chad Hampton. So basically the hand squad. I would have the hand squad out there on a third down. Very nice. I very similar to what you what you guys had. Um like like you, Kyle, Robbie Anderson's gonna be riding the pine and, and my four would be Decker with Q and then the two rookies that we drafted in the third and fourth round are Darius and the Chad Hansen. The Chad? That we're that the we're Chad. going with that we're going with now? The Chad. The Chad. Can we go uh hmm. Can we go baby Decker? Can we go with that? Well, well, let's just wait until, you know, he lights it up and starts flying like a jet in the end zone after he scores a touchdown, and we can work out the uh, the nickname. All right, fair enough. Uh, all right, Alex, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We had a good talk tonight. Uh, go ahead, give us all your information, because uh, you definitely deserved it. All right, thanks a lot for having me on. And you know what I forgot to mention, too? Um, I'd probably have to flip a coin uh, because I think KD can in the UDFA that we signed uh, actually might be uh, on the heels of Jalen Marshall, Sharon Peak for that, you know, last spot on the roster as far as the depth goes. I like Peak because of his special teams aspect, but I think KD Cannon is somebody that we should keep an eye on when we go into training camp this year because he might make some sparks and he's also another vertical threat. But anyway... Thanks, guys, for having me on. Um, you can follow me at Rufio underscore 187 and uh, everything and anything Jets. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you so much for being on, Alex. Thank you for being on. All right, once again, that was our... Yeah, he deserves a standing ovation. Uh, they all do tonight. All the callers are doing a good job. Uh, this might be the last call of the night. We don't know, uh, depending on, you know, how his call turns out. Um, this call last week, be good. Yeah, last week he did not deserve a standing ovation. It was a little crowded. <laughs> this week, let's see if he's by himself. We're going to give him another opportunity. Maybe, you know, maybe he's got some upside. Maybe he's Devin Smith. Maybe you got to give him three years. I don't know. <laughs> Zach, be the Devin Smith of this show. Oh, no, you know what? Let's be the Quincy Numa of this show. Be the Quincy Numa of this show. Zach, thank you for calling into the show. Your second week in a row. Uh, not sure if this is fueled by David or just fueled by our great takes. But What's, I'm not with anyone this time. Don't you all right, worry. That, I'm by myself. I made this sure. This is good. This is good. Um, all right, I, let's talk I, to, I stayed by myself. No more Vinny. No more stupid people, you know? <laughs> hey, I mean, you wouldn't be friends with David if you were keeping to that 24-7. Uh, but let's talk, some <laughs> jets. Let's, let's, let's talk some Jets, man. Uh, you've been on the phone line for about 30 minutes now. You've been waiting patiently, so thank you for that. Um, of course, of course. I love listening to you guys. You know that? Hey, love man. You, you, you can, can, I bring, can I bring up a topic? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Go right ahead. Other people. Okay. David's definitely not going to agree with me on this one, but I, th- I, don't, I do not think that Eric Decker is the number one wide receiver anymore. I do not think he, never was. Think he was good with Brandon Marshall. I do not think he's... Number one wide receiver worthy. The only reason why, and Robbie Anderson too. The only, if you want me to be honest with you, why did Robbie Anderson have a good year last year? Why well, was the rookie, the unsigned, um, undrafted free agent, have a great season or whatever last year? The reason he did was because Brandon Marshall was there and they were all on him. That's why Brandon Marshall didn't have a good season. If Decker was there last season, they both would have had great seasons. Maybe it would have been a different year. But this year it's different. Marshall's gone. So I don't see Decker being that number hey. one receiver that he once was after the whole injury. That's no Marshall. Jalen Marshall is still around. Uh, oh, God. Jalen Marshall, come on. Come on. What is this, He's David? suspended. This actually goes really well, like, over the instrumental, like, us just talking. So I'm going to let this yeah. play out. Like, I, I think Jalen Marshall. Oh, God. Sorry, no, I can't. No, it's sucking me into it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't be dissing on Marshall, man. We got Jalen Marshall on the back end of the roster. He'll be, he'll be holding up like yeah, but he's not going to be there for the first few games of the year. Hey, I, I mean, I, you know, he's got 14 other games. He'll get plenty of playing time. I mean, you got you know, this we, new tight end, uh, Leggett. I like him. I think he's going to be, he's going to be very. Leggett. Um, yeah, Leggett. What? However you say his name, I Leggett. think he's going to be good. Say it with me. Say it with me. Leggett. 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 
All right, there you go. Leg it. Oh, boy. I got it. Yeah. All right, I'm good. I'm good. That's good. I'm good. All right, so go ahead. Where's your take? Um, I think he's going to be great. I, I, he's going to end up turning out to be really good. Him and when Jenkins comes back, Safari and Jenkins, when he, they both come back in that. Because Safari and Jenkins is a wide receiver basically in a tight end. That's, that's what I've heard around. And I think him, he, we're going to have a lot more weapons this season. Here's the thing. As much as everyone's talking, David especially, having so much hope in this season, I have to be honest with you, I really don't have a lot of hope in this season. I don't think Muhammad Wilkerson said we'll go back to 